on last week's episode of WrestleRink. I am super excited today because we're playing a Kenny Kuman game, which we all know Kenny Kuman is a wrestling video game. Yep, the commercial did show us the best part. So, honestly, this really does play like a janky kung fu. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the VGWA. I'm Cobretti. And I'm Wally. And welcome back to WrestleRink as we continue to play through all the console wrestling games. And in this episode, we're going to be playing WrestleMania for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Why not hit that subscribe and like button and help us little fellows out? Come on, 1,000 by the end of the year, baby. Making that YouTube minimum wage. Amazingly, not a single wrestling game was released in 1988, and we're skipping forward to 1989. That's because the Kenny Kuman game was so good, they didn't want to release any games in 1988. Where was that seal of quality to help us against Kenny Kuman? But no worries. The seal of quality is on WWF WrestleMania. This game was published by Acclaim and developed by Rare. According to LJN, they chose Rare as the developer because they were quick, cheap, and they didn't give a damn if there was no time left. You know, with that mindset, they believe cheap is better. Out of all the wrestling video games we've reviewed so far, Cobretti, this is the first WWF game we're reviewing today. There was one WWF game released earlier in 1987 called Micro League Wrestling. This game was released on PC and PC console hybrids. We purchase all the games we review and play on original hardware. Whoa! Man, if you check out the cost on this hardware and software, you'll understand why we didn't play it. The WWF must have spent a fortune in marketing because this game had advertisements in almost all media outlets. And I'm guessing we have a commercial. Yes, we do. Now watch me waste the Macho Man with the clean WrestleMania for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Leg drop, an elbow smash, a body slam! WWF WrestleMania from our queen. Ooh, yeah, I want a rematch. The good news is, after watching that commercial, we don't have to review the moves, because I think the kid went over them all. Yep, and I'm going to have to say, that was not Randy Savage in the commercial. Oh yeah. One of my personal favorite pieces of media for this game is the Nintendo Power Preview, and the cartoon wrestlers they drew along with it. They look like courtroom mug shots. Take a look at Randy Savage. To me, he looks like if Randy Savage and Adam Cole had some strange love child. Andy Cabbage. Ooh. Baby. But I gotta say, these drawings are so bad, they're good. You know, they must have spent a fortune on the marketing and advertising of this game. But they must have spent another fortune on keeping the reviews out of these magazines. Every U.S. magazine advertising WrestleMania did not provide a review for this game. VGWA finally found a German magazine called Power Pro that did a review for the WrestleMania on the NES. Powerplay must really not like wrestling games because they gave this just a average of about 5 to 6 out of 10. Coincidentally, that is also how much they rated pro wrestling. Looks like Power Pro and VGWA are on two different sides of the coin on this one. We love pro wrestling. So let's jump right in and start reviewing this game. With Hulkamania and Nintendo Mania running wild, brother, it should have been a recipe for a truly exceptional game. Influenced by the WrestleMania 5 lineup, the game features six wrestlers, the immortal Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Macho Man Randy Savage, the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, Bam Bam Bigelow, and the greatest intercontinental champion of all time, Ahmed Johnson, I mean, the Honky Tonk Man. And for those of you who didn't catch our WrestleMania countdown video, this bears repeating. Look at that title screen at the beginning of the game. If that picture doesn't tell you the quality of the game, I don't know what will. And let's look at that NES era iPhone aging filter again. That's the stuff of nightmares. And then it jumps right into bigger, better, badder. Well, one out of three isn't too bad. And thanks to Rare, if you had six friends that you wanted to lose, you could have them participate in a tournament for this game. Well, it looks like we've never been friends. And after you lost those six friends, you would be subject to playing against the computer which was not fun at all. One interesting point about the AI, each one played differently. Ted DiBiase would run away from you, while Bam Bam Bigelow would chase you around the ring. Now let's get into one of the more mind-boggling parts of this game, the controls. Uh, that they're horrible? Video game companies hated rental stores, and I think this game has a feature that tries to block you from renting this game. It sure wasn't because of all the reviews they published. Well, other than that, depending on which wrestler you selected, the different button combinations did different moves. Oh, so you mean like the leg drop and the flying elbow smash? 
No, that would make sense. I mean just to do a pen. Oh, pinning should be nothing but just one button. That's simple. You must use a button and a direction to pin your opponent. But depending on which wrestler you are, that combination differs. Well, I'm just gonna call that crap. So while we're at it, we'll talk about another idiotic feature of this game, climbing the top rope. You can only use the turnbuckles at the bottom of the screen. What game does that? I'm in firm belief this was just a method to show Ted DiBiase's plumber crack. If you watched our previous AEW Fight Forever video, you'd have heard that we made fun of their overbuffed character models. There are a few wrestlers where the body type and character model just don't match up. Overall, the graphic design of this video game was fair. While not great, it's not the worst thing we've covered within VGWA. This game was being marketed towards kids, and that was heavily influenced in the artistic design of this game. Based on all the money LJN spent on this game, they met the minimum requirements to call this a wrestling game. This is the first wrestling game we have reviewed where there has been no crowd. This explains my empty hollow feeling when I look into this game. And I did find it odd that the in-ring action occurs only on the bottom third of the screen. The audio was provided by David Weiss, who later went on to provide the audio for Donkey Kong Country. The music design was the one standout of this game. Good, but not extraordinary. And unlike the graphic designs, where you couldn't recognize each wrestler, at least you could recognize the theme music of them. The sound effects are generic. But we didn't even get a ref count. With the massive popularity of WWF at the time, and the marketing machine behind it, there are plenty of copies of this game available. So you can get this game as cheap as $7.99 plus shipping. And to prove that the world has gone mad, you can pick up a 9.8 WADA certified A plus sealed copy of this game for a staggering $10,200. I think these people are like my dad in coins. I'll just wait for the bubble to burst. So the time has come. How do you rate this game? I give this game a meh. I concur. I give this game a meh. So I guess you get what you pay for since LJN paid rare for this game. And now to the ranking. Where do you rank this game? I'd put this below Pro Wrestling for the Master System. Agreed. It was better than Champion Pro Wrestling. So make sure to join us next time as we take a look at our WrestleMania predictions versus the results. Who's going to win this time? Fire Pro or WWE's 2K23?